now, Dakota Ring Theater presents the continuing adventures of Canada's greatest superhero, that scourge of the underworld, hunter of those who prey upon the innocent, that marvelous masked mystery man known only as the Red Panda! The Red Panda, mysterious crusader for justice, hides his true identity as one of the city's wealthiest men in his never-ending battle against crime and corruption. Only his trusty driver, Kit Baxter, who joins him in his quest in the guise of the Flying Squirrel, knows who wears the mask of the Red Panda. This episode, Tis the Season! The day before Christmas arrived in Toronto... And all the good folks to and fro extra pronto. The lamp posts were frosted a delicate white with the sweet Christmas flurries that fell overnight. And all of the people, rich and poor, short and tall, smiled jolly good wishes they wished them to all. Yes, the city was happy and jolly and gay. And each one you asked, why they'd cheerfully say that a joyous occasion was soon on its way. It would break the next dawn. On a fine Christmas day. But the spirit and joy didn't fill every nook. There were a few places you just didn't look. Places where darkness retreated to hide. Till the season of joy flowed away like the tide. And lurked in the shadows. They'd give you a fright. All manner of things that go bump in the night. Men whose bark might be bad, but then so was their bite. Men of evil, against whom the goodness must fight. So it was, in an alley, filled with garbage so smelly, was a small little boy, who was named Harry Kelly. Harry clung to the shadows behind a trash can, where he hid, having followed a foul-looking man, and was there that he learned of the bad man's worst plan. Boys, it's Christmas tomorrow, said the gangster named Jake. Time for us all to grab all we can take. No one will expect it, this day above all. They'll all be at home, just a deck in the hall. And that's when we'll strike, said Jake to his gang. We'll haul off the loot, and no one will hang. There's a big shipment on, and it's really hush-hush. Some bright Christmas cheer for delivery rushed. Them orphans who live over on College Street is supposed to be getting a holiday treat. The whole thing's arranged by some wealthy young man, but giving us presents ain't part of his plan. Food... Clothes and toys, gonna be sweet as honey. We'll steal all that swag and we'll sell it for money. A big panel truck will be rolling tonight, and that driver is in for a heck of a fight. So chortled the villainous rat face named Jake, while young Harry Kelly looked on and quaked. Not in fear, understand. Harry Kelly was brave, but in anger and rage at yon evil knave. Most boys Harry's age wouldn't know how to help, They'd be frightened and could only look on and yelp. But this boy was different. On this you can trust us. He worked on the side as an agent of justice. Stealing from orphans? The young Harry thought. And on Christmas, too. Well, it's trouble they've bought. When the chief hears of this, why, these gangsters will pay. He'll bust up this racket and do it today. He'll learn them some games and they won't want to play. And with that, Harry Kelly was fast on his way. For you see, this wasn't a usual boy who spent all his time with a game or a toy. I tell you the truth, this is not propaganda. He served the masked man known as the Red Panda! So young Harry Kelly ran off like a shot. Red Panda must know of this terrible plot. I'll find him. I must, and for just this one reason. Only he can stop Jake's gang from stealing the season. Down the alley he sprinted with nary a pause, with determined speed that would sure draw applause. To the sidewalk he ran, the snow flew in his wake, for the odds would get worse with the longer he'd take. The shoppers, last minute, they hurried and rushed, yet through, like a salmon, the young agent pushed, till he heard afar off a ring-a-ling sound, that froze Harry Kay where he stood on the ground. Church bells! Thought the boy with an uncommon fright. I'm to sing with the choir just this very night. I'd rather the 
was singing it never did start, but that would just break up my poor mother's heart. She's looking so forward to hearing me sing. Oh, I can't disappoint her. I'll do anything. And with that, Harry Kelly considered the others, who faced a sad Christmas without any mothers or fathers. They had not a one, not between them. It would make a man weep if he had only seen them. Deprived of the bright Christmas feast they deserved, Harry set his jaw firm. He would see justice served. I must do what's right, but I know in my heart I can help those poor kids and still sing my part. I can do it and never let anyone down, because nobody's messing with Red Panda's town. And so Harry ran through the alleys and streets, just as fast as he could on two size five feet. Some may not know to where, but others, you know, he ran to his contact man, name of Spiro. Spiro ran a gym, and boxing he taught, but the rest of the time, injustice he fought. The Red Panda's agents got missions from him. They'd trade secret signals within Spiro's gym. He'd know what to do for the heroes he'd send. The villainous gangsters would reach a bad end, and Harry would turn from one mission to other. He would make it to church, and he'd sing for his mother. Mister Spiro! He shouted and knocked extra hard, but the door was locked tight. There was posted a card. Off for the Christmas. He read the card say, "Open next week, but for now go away. But if Mister Spiro has taken a hike, what will the poor orphan's Christmas be like? I must find a way. I must give it some thought. Red Panda must learn of this terrible plot." And so the boy ran, ran all over the city, through neighborhoods nice, through slums dark and gritty. But every agent he knew was away. No one could deliver his message today. Constable Parker had gone out of town to visit his brother. He wasn't around. Even his old contact man, Mister Finalman, had closed up his shop. You just couldn't find him. It's getting so late. The boy almost despaired. But then he saw something far up in the air, something that glided. It did float and twirl, and the something was clearly the shape of a girl. Harry's heart jumped, his head how it whirled, for he'd spotted afar off the masked flying squirrel. Miss Squirrel will help. She'll know what to do. She's the Red Panda's partner. When trouble does brew, they fight it together. If I can just reach her, they'll foil Jake's gang. That terrible creature! So on Harry raced, eyes up in the sky, straining to see where the squirrel did fly. At last, from far off, he just saw her land on a rooftop. And Harry, oh how he ran! He ran to the building, ran right past the doorman, a slow-moving fellow whose first name was Norman. He raced to the lift. He must reach the squirrel, and he ran at top speed, headlong into a girl. Watch it, short pants! She declared to Harry's great fright. You're in a big hurry for Christmas Eve night. Norman the doorman approached with a shout, for it was his duty to throw Harry out. Harry dove for the button. The door shut with a click, and he and the girl headed up double quick. The girl looked at him, saying, "That was my floor." In a voice that he thought he'd heard somewhere before. Sorry, ma'am," said the boy. "If I cause you some worry, but I'm meeting a friend, and I'm in a big hurry." Harry looked at the girl. She was awfully pretty, and she gave him a smirk, both at once wise and witty. She was dressed like a driver, uniformed and all that, with a wisp of red hair poking out of her hat. Is this friend expecting you, short pants? She said. No. Harry Kelly just answered in dread. What if she'd gone while he took this ride? If the squirrel flew away while he was inside, how could he reach the ending desired, to save Christmas Eve and still make it to choir? Harry was quiet. The girl wished him luck, but when he reached the roof, he felt just like a schmuck. The squirrel was gone. There was nobody there, and brave Harry Kelly was filled with despair. If I was a hero myself, I could fight. I'd break up Jake's gang, and I'd do it tonight. But I'm just a dumb kid with poor aching feet. Harry Kelly, he thought as he slumped down the street, he hadn't saved Christmas, hadn't done any good. Those kids wouldn't have the fine presents they should. The bad guys would win. They'd steal the whole feast. 
and poor Harry hadn't but helped in the least. He blinked back the tears that left him half blind. You look like a man with something on your mind. Young Mr. Kelly looked up with a gasp. His heart, how it jumped, and to hope he did grasp. For high on a wall in the alley above hung a girl upside down in a cat suit and gloves. The cowl on her face couldn't hide all her beauty. Harry knew that he hadn't yet failed in his duty. Somehow she found him. It didn't seem true. Where it was once just one, now they were two. But even the brave flying squirrel would need help if they were to make those criminals yelp. Miss Squirrel, I'm so glad I finally did find you. And we need the chief. Oh, yeah? Look behind you. He turned, and the boy jumped most out of his skin. For there stood a man with a mask and a grin. He towered above him, a hat on his head, and gauntlets and mask in a bright fiery red. They were here, both of them. He felt a keen thrill, and they'd fight till the end with strength, speed, and skill. I hear you have something that needs to be said. But how? Harry started. The man shook his head. It's better you don't know our secrets, my lad. And I think that it's time that your story we had. And Harry told all of the plan that he'd heard. The red panda was still. He heard every word. Blank eyes of his mask with a strange light did gleam. Harry just couldn't say what that might mean. But he told how Jake planned Christmas to steal from those who had nothing. It sounded unreal. At last he said nothing. He'd told all he knew. The masked man, with anger, it seemed that he grew. And Harry still wondered just what he might do. But the flying squirrel's face finally gave him a clue. Around her bright lips there hung a small grin. She'd heard this before, and she'd hear it again. But it never got tired, like music it was, when the panda got righteous rage in his claws. We've got little time. We must do what we can. We must each give our all just to foil this plan. They cannot succeed. Our justice forbears it. Christmas will be saved. The Red Panda swears it. You are listening to the Red Panda Adventures from Decoder Ring Theater. Brought to you by our broadcast... What are you doing? The commercial. I just want to let all our listeners know about the many fine products they can buy in our online stores. Peter, I, I do the commercials around here. I'm the announcer. That's the big deal. I just thought I'd remind people to support our shows by using the convenient PayPal links on our homepage. Listen, little man, you're horning into my gig. Now cut it out. Oh, come on! You're narrating the entire story this week, Mr. Big Shot. Give a guy a break. What's going on? I uh, think Peter's having a breakdown of some kind. <sighs> this might take a while. Eggnog? Sure. What's going on here? We're getting eggnog. But, Greg, Stephen's narrating the whole episode, and he won't even let me do the commercial. Oh, Peter, the commercial is a very important part of the show. Without the support of our listeners making donations and buying shirts, books, CDs, and other bric-a-brac... Why we couldn't afford to keep making these adventure and mystery programs. Just listen to the way Stephen says, PayPal donation. PayPal donation! Or convenient links on our homepage. Convenient links on our homepage! See? But, but I have to play the bad guy, and it's Christmas. Peter, the bad guy is a very important part of any Christmas episode. He is? Certainly. Why, there's Mr. Potter and It's a Wonderful Life, or The Grinch, or Scrooge. Why, he's the lead. That's right. The lead. Stephen, I'm the lead. <laughs> okay. The lead. All right, little buddy, let's suit up for Act Two. We're back. Did you talk him down? I think so. <laughs> Is he going to stay down this time? I doubt it. The lead. Uh, Stephen, bring us home. DecoderRingTheater.com is your address to adventure! Less than an hour by tick of the clock, and five gangsters waited. A mask of a sock hid the faces of each from the innocent eye that the men's evil deeds and their faces might spy. The streets were all quiet, the twilight had grown, and fat flakes of snow o'er the sidewalks had blown. T'was quiet and reverent, a pure Christmas night, and the lights in the windows were hung shining bright. 
But the hearts of the men in the car were all black. They hovered like vultures waiting to attack. They'd feed off the sadness and misery they'd cause when they hijacked Christmas and blocked Santa Claus. This is it, boys, said Jake. Each remember your part. When the truck first appears, that's when we make our start. Use your rods if you need to. No mercy tonight. If they yell for the cops, why, we'll shoot them for spite. With the haul from this job, we can live for a year. Come next July, we'll still have Christmas cheer. Why should we work like a bunch of poor chumps? We can live the good life without busting our humps. That's what we fight for tonight, you all knows. We'll make the world pay what it already owes. And with that, the carload of cowards just chuckles. They took out their guns, and each one cracked their knuckles, expecting to use them just this very night, but never expecting too much of a fight. One driver was all that did stand in between them. That driver would learn what they thought of the season. For all criminals, they are cowards and worse. And though calling them so might just cause them to curse and to threaten and pose like the peacocks they are. But from a fair fight, they are always quite far. Five to one are the sort of odds they prefer. If the one's not too fit or too brave, they'd concur. Here it comes, cried the hood as the truck came in sight. Our ship's coming in, and it's coming tonight. The gangster's car lurched forth to block off the road. They started to climb out to hijack the load. But then something happened they never had dreamed. The truck lurched forth faster, toward them careened. Jake pulled the car forward as fast as he could and barely got clear of the place where it stood before the rig rolled forth with never a pause. Jake's gang was now angry and with a good cause. That bird thinks he's tough. Jake swung into gear. We'll see if he likes where we take it from here. The dark sedan raced down the snow-covered streets after the truck that was loaded with treats. The driver was clever, the driver was strong, but the crook's car was faster and soon pulled along beside the great truck. And five shots were fired, two at the cab and three at the tires. But each missed their mark, and the truck lurched away, down an alley, and Jake's gang did chuckle and say, He's finished now, boys. That way is a dead end. Against five of us, he can never defend. I'll park the car to block off his escape. I'd say our friend is in pretty bad shape. The gangsters closed in. They approached full of care, for the driver's brave flight had provided a scare. Finally, one thug filled himself with bravado, yanked open the door, our would-be desperado, and what the men saw in the truck made them start, and Jake felt a sinking around about his heart. They expected a driver. They found one all right, but this kind of driver just filled them with fright. A cat-suited girl was a-filling the chair, with a squirrel mask that covered her face and her hair. When she spoke, all those cowards were a-filled with dread, although she just smiled and... Hello, boys. ...said... It's a trap. It's a setup. cried Jake and his gang, and just then, through the alley, some laughter did ring. <laughs> Not the bright ho-ho-ho of one Santa Claus, but the chilling laugh of one who serves a just cause. It's the panda, cried Jake, his eyes welling in fear. You mugs grab the girl. We'll get out of here. But as they turned back to the truck, she was gone. They now faced two foes who had both brains and brawn. Somewhere in the darkness, no one could say where, for the masked heroes had disappeared into thin air. Let's get to the car, and we'll get out of here. There'll be other nights, Jake said with a sneer. <laughs> but from high above, the laughter just goaded. And what do you think? Jake's old car exploded. They blew up our car. We're cut off, trapped like rats. And with that, our two heroes swooped in like great bats. They landed in flurries of punches and kicks. And though it was five against two, they had tricks that you'd never believe if you never had seen them. Those crooks weren't so tough as they thought it was semen. For the panda and squirrel, they were brave and well-trained. Together they worked, the attack they sustained. But of all the secrets they had in their plans, the best one of all wasn't really so grand. Nor no secret at all. It really is true. It's a secret that's free, and it's for me and you. Each one of us can be a hero, you see, 
if each works for something that's larger than me. If we strive every day to be good, we for we, for that's what a real hero does, don't you see? Well, that was a nice little workout, I think. We took out the trash, and we're both in the pink. Let's clear this truck out before the law comes. We'll deliver the gifts, and they'll wrap up these bums. But the panda just frowned, and he said, Man alive, I count only four. Where is crook number five? For Jake, he was creeping. He'd passed far from heed, but at the last moment was taken by greed. They ruined the caper. They've blown up the car. I have to get something. I've come in this far. Jake opened the door. He was quiet and quick. He'd take what he found when his head he did stick in the back of the truck. But all that he found was another surprise that was hanging around. He felt a sharp crack just beneath his old hat. Twas brave Harry Kelly just swinging a bat. As Jake fell, H. Kelly said proudly, Take that! Let that be a lesson, you dirty old rat! And Harry rode up in the front on the seat with the panda and squirrel. They drove down the street, drove up to the place where the orphans did wait. He helped the masked heroes unload every crate, every box, every present, the warm clothes and food, things we take for granted but others elude. And Harry felt prouder than ever he had to know that he'd thwarted a caper so bad and to help bring some joy to those who had none. But then Harry thought of a question, just one. How did you know where the truck would come from? We started so late, and we just had to run. Everything worked out, that I'll allow. I know that it happened, but I don't know how. I, uh, happened to know who was sending this truck, so I knew where to go. It really was luck. He's a wealthy young fellow, but just the same... He'd rather that nobody else knew his name. But you, Harry Kelly, you sure saved the day. You saved these kids Christmas and made the crooks pay. If it weren't a secret, I'd sing it out loud. You'd sure make your old mother awfully proud. With that, Harry's face, why, it just seemed to fall. He'd been brave all this while. He'd given his all, but he had forgotten an important thing. His mother was waiting just to hear him sing. He told the two heroes just why he was sad. I'd do it again, he hastened to add. I just wish I wouldn't have let my mom down. But it's in 15 minutes. It's clear across town. She'll be at the church, but I won't be there. With all that she does, it just doesn't seem fair. The heroes just looked, one at each, with a smirk. And Red Panda picked Harry up with a jerk. And over his shoulder he threw him and ran, before Harry Kelly could ask, What's the plan? They'd thrown him into a big black waiting car that was hidden nearby. It was not very far. The squirrel sparked the engine to life with a start. And at terrible speed, the black car did depart. Wahoo! Shouted Harry. Kelly! Ain't seen nothing yet, kiddo, the flying squirrel said, and she flipped a switch just over her head, and with that, a rocket in back of the car burst forth with a thrust. They raced on afar. They raced through the empty streets fast as can be, almost to their goal, when at last they did see... Roadblock signs, boss. The streets closed ahead. If we can't get through, we'll go over instead. Oh! said the boy, but had time for no more. For by then the red panda had opened the door, and like a football up under his arm, the young Harry Kelly was tucked far from harm. So he hoped. But where the masked man planned to go, Harry had to admit that he just didn't know. Hold on there, son. Try hard not to squirm. As if Harry could in that grip so firm. And to Harry Kelly's continued amazement, ran straight up the wall with the young agent. His shoes with some power did crackle and spark, as up the sheer surface they quickly embarked. He ran without effort, without even trying. But what happened next made the boy think of dying. Straight off the rooftop into open space, the red panda leapt, and the very next place he could land was the other side of the street. The boy closed his eyes, but from the man's feet, the sparks pushed him off, away from the roof. Then they pulled him forth, the sparks from his hoof, and before Harry Kelly had opened his eyes, they'd run across that roof and leapt off the far side. Wow! Harry said, and you could see just why. 
This leap was so far, even if he did try. Those marvelous shoes couldn't pull them both forth. That leap was at least sixty-five feet due north. And so, as he leapt, with the strength of his belly, into the air the man threw Harry Kelly. <coughs> The boy shouted, his voice full of care, but suddenly hands pulled him out of thin air. He saw that the hands belonged to a girl, and he knew that it must be the one flying squirrel. But the gliders don't work when her two hands are full, so with a... Hang on! She twisted around, and the force threw young Harry far over the ground. Almost the whole distance he flew here to there, and at last the red panda caught him in midair. And on the far rooftop did land with a bump. But what happened next really had Harry stumped. We're here, said the man in the mask to the boy. Here where? Harry Kelly said, slightly annoyed. After all, fun is fun. But he just couldn't see how this helped his mother to any degree. Over here, called the squirrel who had landed nearby and lifted a trapdoor on rooftop so high. Music drifted up through the gap that was ope. Church music. Harry's heart lifted with hope. In their high wiring, scramble and search, he'd come up to stand on the roof of his church. Run, boy! I think there's no time to spare. Harry grinned with a wave, and he hopped right in there. He raced through the crawl space and into the hall, got into his choir robes just as the call came forth for the young singers. Come one and all. Harry Kelly did sing for his mom after all. There were thirty other boys singing that night. In truth, it would probably give you a fright. So many wrong keys and so few in tune. But every mother was over the moon. Mrs. Kelly sat watching her boy so angelic. Of his great adventure, twas never a relic. She never would know of his courageous deed. How he helped to save Christmas for others in need. But in the end, that was likely the best. Besides, Harry Kelly just needed a rest. And far above, on the church's snowy top, sat two costumed heroes just taking a stop. The music swelled up from the organ below, and the Christmas light shone oh so bright on the snow. And there was just one thing she wanted to know. I don't suppose that you've got mistletoe. Get Baxter, behave. Coming, you could have seen it. Yes, boss. Said the squirrel, but she didn't mean it. And so concludes another adventure of the Red Panda. This recording and the story, characters, and situations contained therein are the exclusive property of their creator and copyright holder, Greg Taylor, and are produced and distributed by Decoder Ring Theater through arrangement with him. These recordings may not be rebroadcast or redistributed by any means for any reason without express permission. Until next time, when Decoder Ring Theater brings you the further thrilling adventures of Canada's greatest superhero, this is Stephen Burley reminding you DecoderRingTheater.com is your address to adventure! The Red Panda Adventures, episode 30, Tis the Season, was written and directed by Greg Taylor, with original music by Andrea Lyons, and featured the vocal talents of Shannon Arnold, Stephen Burley, Peter Nickel, Clarissa Nederlanden, and Greg Taylor. Until next time, for all of us here, Merry Christmas, everybody.